The U.S. Air Force reported the success of the first comprehensive test of the AMG-183A Airborne Rapid Reaction System. This is a hypersonic air-to-ground missile, and this time it was a fully operational version. The test took place on December 9th in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Southern California. It was conducted by the 412th Test Wing based at Edwards Air Force Base. The AGM-183A ARRW missile was launched from a B-52H Stratofortress bomber during the test launch. During the test flight, the hypersonic missile exceeded the speed of sound by more than five times, completely executed the flight plan, and self-destructed. According to preliminary estimates, the test was a complete success. What is this weapon, and what tasks is it supposed to solve? First, briefly, what's considered a hypersonic weapon? It's often written that it must travel in space at speeds in excess of Mach 5 numbers in order to do so, but ballistic missile warheads were reaching speeds of 3.7 to 4.3 miles per second, which is Mach 17 to 20 back in the late 1950s. However, they're not considered hypersonic weapons. There's another important quality, the ability to maneuver. After all, the same warheads flew along a strictly ballistic and therefore completely predictable trajectory. A missile for missile defense does not chase a warhead like an air defense missile chases an airplane or a cruise missile having much higher speed. It's launched into a computer calculated point where it would meet the warhead and destroy it. In the case of hypersonic weapons, this method is not suitable because it's impossible to calculate its trajectory in advance. Therefore, it's necessary to use the method of anti-aircraft missiles to catch up with the target and destroy it. But this requires, firstly, to have a speed significantly higher than the speed of hypersonic missile, and secondly, to withstand huge overloads, more than 30 G, which occur when maneuvering at such speeds. So far, this is a technically unfeasible task, and this makes hypersonic weapons unique today. There's no defense against them. Any object, be it an aircraft carrier or a command post of a high command, will be destroyed by it. The creation of hypersonic weapons is considered to be, perhaps, the highest priority in the development of armaments today. Therefore, such programs exist in the US, Russia, and China, the three most militarily powerful powers. It's believed that Russia and China overtook the US in their programs in the 2010s, and now America is investing heavily to close the gap. The U.S. is currently developing several hypersonic weapons programs. The Long Range Hypersonic Weapon Program, LRWH for short, involves building a hypersonic airframe. It's being developed by Lockheed Martin for the U.S. Army and Navy. A series of test launches are planned for the end of 2023. Another project being developed by the Pentagon's Office of Advanced Research Projects is called the Hypersonic Air Breathing Weapon Concept, abbreviated HAWC. It involves the creation of a cruise missile with a direct flow air breathing engine. It's a relatively small airborne missile. Another program is called Hypersonic Attack Cruise Missile, abbreviated HACM, which will be developed for the U.S. Air Force by Raytheon Technologies. Details of the program have not yet been disclosed, but it's also probably conceived as a missile to be launched from an airplane. There are several other U.S. hypersonic programs in less readiness, Conventional Prompt Strike and Hypersonic Air Launch, OASUW, which the Navy is developing. Tactical Boost Glide and Operational Fires are being developed by the Pentagon's Office of Advanced Research Projects. Russia is developing three hypersonic weapons programs. Among them are the Avangard Strategic Targeting Munition, which is launched by an intercontinental ballistic missile, the Sirkon Sea-based missile, and the air-based missile Kinzhal. Russia declared all three complexes ready and even entered service. The Kinzhal has been used twice in combat operations in Ukraine. In particular, the Russians said that it was used to destroy the Tachka U ballistic missile depot, which was located on the site of a nuclear warhead storage facility that was built during Soviet times near Ivano Frankivsk in the rock formations of the Carpathian Mountains. In other words, it's a maximally protected facility, including against nuclear strikes. China also has programs to create hypersonic weapons, among which the most notable is the DF-17. It's known that this is a gliding munition which is accelerated by a solid propellant missile. Tests of this weapon in October 2021 greatly alarmed the Americans. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley, then compared this event to the launch of Sputnik. 
the first significant success of the Soviet space program. Now directly about the hypersonic weapon that the U.S. successfully tested on December 9th, this is the AGM-183 ARRW Operational Tactical Range Missile. The acronym ARRW stands for Air Launched Rapid Response Weapon. It stated that the missile flew 1,600 kilometers, reaching a speed of Mach 5, or more than 3,800 miles per hour. Based on this information, we can say that the AGM-183 ARRW is conceptually similar to the Russian Kinzhal, which is also airborne. However, it's not launched from a subsonic bomber, but from a fighter interceptor MiG-31, which carries the proud title of the fastest production aircraft. It has a speed of Mach 2.5 or 1,900 miles per hour. That is, the Russians immediately add more than 1.5 Mach to the speed of their missile than the Americans. The report of the Congressional Research Service indicates the speed of the Kinzhal is Mach 10 and the range is about 2,000 kilometers. So the characteristics of the AGM-183 ARRW are closer to the Russian Sirkon, a sea-based missile which will have an average speed of between Mach 6.5 and 8 and a range of about 1,000 kilometers. Much less is known about the Chinese hypersonic missiles. The Americans estimate their range at about 1,000 to 1,500 miles. As we can see, judging by the information that we have, the Americans have not yet reached the level of the best Russian design, both in range and, most importantly, in speed. Incidentally, the huge speeds give the hypersonic weapons another advantage over subsonic and supersonic weapons, in addition to their practical invulnerability. Talking about the Russian Kinzhal, we say that it was able to destroy a former storage facility designed for a nuclear strike. How was it able to do this? After all, it was not equipped with a non-nuclear, but with a conventional charge weighing about a thousand pounds. For example, the American Mark 84 bomb weighs twice as much as the Kinzhal warhead, but it only penetrates 11 feet of concrete. Surely the walls in the nuclear storage facility built back in the USSR were less thick. Moreover, it's reported that this storehouse was located on rocky rocks. That is, we may be talking about tens of meters of granite and concrete. It's all about the laws of physics. The kinetic energy, that is, the energy that the body has due to its speed, is proportional to the product of mass by the square of the speed. Take the American Tomahawk missile as an example. Its warhead, like the Kinzhal, weighs a thousand pounds, but it can accelerate to Mach 0.75, which is 13 times less than the Kinzhal. Therefore, the kinetic energy of the Tomahawk's warhead will be 169 times less than the kinetic energy of the Kinzhal's warhead not 13 times. Moreover, this energy is not dispersed in all directions, as in the case of an explosion of an ordinary munition, but is directed predominantly in the direction of its movement. It turns out a kind of cumulative jet of enormous power, hence the enormous destructive power of hypersonic weapons even without a nuclear warhead. But back to the American hypersonic missile AGM-183 ARRW. Its test is in the final stage confirming the characteristics of the missile in its final version. If everything goes according to plan, Lockheed Martin may start mass production of such missiles in the fiscal year 2024. Well, we can say that America has significantly narrowed its gap in its development of hypersonic weapons to Russia and China. Time will tell how the race to develop such weapons will proceed, and we'll tell our viewers about it. So subscribe to our channel not to miss interesting videos, not only about this, but also about other modern weapons. And if you liked our story about hypersonic weapons today, please like our videos. It'd be the best reward for our work. Thank you for your attention.